Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to install the FT Aura 5 inside of a wing or what we commonly use the term of Elevon mixing. Now if you guys have ever flown a wing before, they're really cool, they're really easy to fly, they're compact. We're actually going to be putting it in the Nano Goblin. This is my personal Nano Goblin here. Ready Made RC finally got these back in stock and as you know we love Ready Made RC. So what better plane to put it in than one that I can actually lay on the table and work on. But this will work on all of our flight test design foam board wings uh, just the same way. Now the cool thing is you can see I don't have a computer here we're gonna be able to do all the Elevon wing mixing right from the two buttons right on this board right here so let's go ahead and open this up drop this little board in and get started so there's a couple things we're gonna to want to have access to we're gonna to want to have our FT or light board also this comes with a couple pieces of 3m sticky tape here we're gonna to want to use that to actually mount this inside of our wing now one thing and it's my fault that we need to do is we have a rectangle here but we don't have the spot cut here. Now you could just kind of stick it on, but I really want this to be firmly attached. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a little relief for that switch back plate here. The reason this is important is we want the board to be able to fit firmly uh, down on the tape, but also we don't want it to be partially attached. It needs to be nice and parallel to the surface. And when we mount this, it's really important that the board mounts flat to the tape and the tape mounts flat to the bottom surface, parallel with the bottom surface of the wing. So now that we have this cut out, you can see it'll fit nice and even, just like that. Just go ahead and put that tape on. Make sure you take your time and get good adhesion for your board. It's really important that we mount our board in the proper orientation here. You can see that our servo ports are on the back and then our actual receiver ports are on the front. We're gonna to wanna to mount it in this way with the receiver ports pointing towards the front of the nose. I like to oftentimes try to get this right by the center of gravity. It's not absolutely crucial to do so, uh, but in this case with the Nano Goblin, it fits in beautifully. There we go. I'm just gonna mount it right about here. Notice I'm taking my time, we're gonna mount it right perfectly square so if you kind of draw a line along these pins notice the tail it's not going to be an angle one way or the other we're also going to take the receiver that we choose to use in this case I'm going to go ahead and use this little satellite receiver but you can use FR Sky, Futaba, Grappner any real protocol that you like that's mainstream will work just great on this and I'm just going to go ahead and plug this guy right into my servo port like that. Now the center section of our 3M tape actually when you pop out the little tiny when you pop out that tiny little uh, square we save that now we can use this to actually stick our receiver down. I'm gonna go ahead mount this down and out of the way. We'll go right here. That looks good. I can tuck this out of the way. I'm just going to take my time as I'm working here just to dress up the wires so they're nice and clear. There we go. Our board's now installed and our receiver's in. Our next step is to install the servo plugs in their proper orientation. For that, we have a really simple quick start guide. It's included in all our FT Aura boards. And it's a lot easier to kind of show you this here. First, you can see that our servo ports are facing right here. And the actual orientation is this way. We have our left Elevon will go into servo port two and our right will go into servo port three. So anytime you're figuring out the left and right of an airplane, it's gonna be as if you're in the cockpit. So in this case, this is my left aileron, and that's gonna go in a servo port two. The signal wire is gonna be at the top, and the way that you can tell that is by simply looking down and seeing where the horseshoe is. So there we go. Now our next one in servo port three is our right elevon. That's right here. Our signal wire is going to be pointing towards the center of the board. And then we have our throttle, and we have our throttle connection, and that's going to go into servo one. Make sure that all your signal wires are pointing towards the center of the board. There we go. So I'm just going to hold this here for a little recap. 
you have throttle and server port one, left Elevon and server port two, and right Elevon and server port three. While I'm at it, because this has a little FPV unit on there and I can use receiver power, I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into one of the extra servo ports. Let's do that. I'm just gonna plug it into servo port four. There we go. Let's tuck all these wires underneath here, kind of dress it up a little bit. There we go. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and bind our receiver and start our programming on the board. Now, because all the tuning is actually on the board and not on the radio, you can have a very simple, affordable radio and you don't need to worry about how all the Elevon mixing and sub trims and all the features in there. All you need to do specifically on a Spectrum is make sure that your aileron elevator and rudder travel is set to 125% on all ports. And also that your gear is on the three position switch of your choosing. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and set it on this switch right here. Now, every, every model is different. You can look at your manual, but in this case, We'll just go over and I'll show you what this looks like. We'll go to servo setup. So for our travel, just go to aileron, 125, elevator, set it from 100 to 125, and router from 100. And back out of that screen and if you don't know how to switch your uh, gear switches all we need to do on a spectrum go to system setup go to channel assign we'll go to next and where the gear is just go to the gear switch that you want to select in this case I'm going to select C there we go now the reason I named this FT Aura is I can take this one setup and I can go to any of my airplanes with the FT Aura light in there and as long as I did the tune on the board, I'm good to go. So at this point we're going to go ahead and power this on. You're going to notice that we have power to our board but our receiver is dark. Give it about 10 or 15 seconds and wait for the flashy orange light. There we go. And at this point I can go ahead and bind. I'm going to move my transmitter about four feet away. There we go. Now you're going to see when I move the controls that the ailerons are moving but my pitch is doing nothing. And that's because we don't have it actually in Elevon mode. Now typically this is where you go to your transmitter and you'd actually switch to Elevon. It's really important that you don't do that. We're going to actually do it right on the board. And the way that we're going to do it on the board is we're going to hold down on both our bind and our trim buttons at the same time until the light turns green. This will typically take between seven and 10 seconds. Let's go ahead and do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Now we're in, in green mode here. Now that we have our flashing green light, what we need to do to put it in Elevon mode is hold down on our trim button for about five or six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. That red light indicates the red light indicates that we actually now have Elevon mode. So if I move this control, you can see that we're good to go. Now this is a really cool thing. While this is still flashing green, I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up and I'm gonna tilt this. And you're gonna notice as I tilt this, that once I pass about 40 degrees, the ailerons react. Now what we wanna look at is if I tilt this to the right, I wanna see this aileron going down to push me back to the left, I wanna say no. And instead it goes right. You're also gonna notice that when I give right input, that the ailerons go the wrong direction. This is a very simple thing to fix. All I need to do to change my aileron and my gyro direction is to simply hold the controls on my ailerons for about six or seven seconds and wait for a reaction. There we go. So now when I give right input, it gives me right aileron. And also, when I bank it, you can see now it's turning back to the left and it's turning back to the right. So let's check our pitch. When I do go on pitch, you can see my pitch is backwards. All I need to do is hold my pitch button. All I need to do is move my stick all the way in one direction. It doesn't matter which direction. Wait for the reaction. 
and now my controls are done. Now typically if I was controlling this through a Spectrum or an FR Sky or something else, if I had my servo ports backwards, I'd have to either swap them or go to Elevon B mixing. It's a lot of back and forth headaches. With this, all you gotta simply do is go into this mode, tilt it, and look at the reaction, confirm that your stick is backwards as well, and then move your stick until it reacts back. It automatically tunes it, changes the channel mapping, everything is done. So one last little test here, tilt it to the right, it makes me wanna go back to the left, push it down, makes me wanna go up, and of course the inverse is true as well. We're gonna go ahead and turn on our six axis feature here, which is gonna give you limit assist, it's gonna give you level assist, and, and basically make the plane very easy to fly. To enable this mode, all we need to do is hold down on our bind button for about six seconds until you see the light turn blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there we are. Those cycles back and forth indicates now that mode two which basically is a center position on your gear switch is now six access mode. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. To exit out, we're gonna go ahead and hold both buttons down for about six or seven seconds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'll release. The rapid flashing blue light means it's doing a reboot. And we're all set. So I'm gonna go ahead and just be safe. I'm gonna cycle the power one time. And there we go. We are now bound up and linked. You can see that the motor's gonna run. Our controls are all moving in the right directions. Let's go ahead and check our modes here. I'm just gonna slide my, uh, my battery in here. Close this up. Now in position one, that's gonna enable our six axis mode with low rates as well here. So when I tilt this, you're gonna notice that the aileron moves down and holds down trying to bring me back to a level position. Same goes with pitch. Now in three axis mode, that's gonna be high rates, high gains, and also high throws. This is really good if you really wanna go crazy with aerobatics and have some fun. Three axis mode really just takes the outside effects of wind out of the picture. So you're gonna see as I move it around, that it'll temporarily react, but it's not gonna try to bring me back to level. So now our controls work, everything is tuned, we're ready to go out and fly it, but that's a different video that's gonna be right here. That video is gonna show you how to tune and how to trim and how to lock in all your settings out on the flying field. Do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, but before you also fly this, watch that video so when you go out there, you'll know how to get the most out of your Aura control board, lock in all your settings so every time you go to fly it, it flies perfectly. Thanks so much for being part of the family. We'll see you next time.